Hey everybody, it's Galmanax, and welcome back to the qualifier play-in best of three murders at Karlov Manor sealed events. In today's event, we'll be taking our play-in points and converting them into any amount of gems, so pretty happy with whatever happens here. But if we do manage to get four match wins before a single match loss, we could get a qualifier weekend entry, which would also be pretty cool. So without further ado, let's hop into this sealed event, bust open these packs, and see what we get to play with today. Alright, so we've got multiple powerful rares in white. We have Unyielding Gatekeeper, which can flip up as a removal spell. We've got No Witnesses for a board wipe, and we have Ezram Agency Chief being really, really hard to deal with because you can sacrifice an artifact for only one mana to give it Hexproof plus... You can give it Vigilance or Lifelink if you want any of those abilities as well. This card's super, super busted, super scary. There's also Tristani here, which has some great activated abilities, giving any creature Death Touch, Vigilance, or Double Strike. So those are all really powerful rares in white. A couple of them are multicolored, but I think we're looking pretty likely to play white in the sealed pool. That is the only thing for sure. Connecting the dots is basically completely unplayable, even in a super aggressive deck and draft. It's just a little inconsistent. And the Assassin's Trophy is solid removal, but there are plenty of removal spells just as good, pretty much, at uh, at common, at least for draft and sealed purposes. And then there's the Yaris, which is a pretty fun kind of build around for a deck that has a lot of disguise, a lot of face down creatures, but not as individually powerful as basically any of our white rares. So we'll keep those in mind, um, but we'll definitely take a peek at our fixing and our colorless cards in general here. Looks like pretty weak fixing, one public thoroughfare and one escape tunnel for colorless fixing. So that's not the most. And we only got one dual land which is the blue white rare so probably not doing a ton of splashing unless our green has a bunch of ways to splash it's got one nervous gardener and the rest of our green cards kind of suck there's like almost nothing here i mean none of these cards are terrible but i just kind of noticed just glancing over at green that there's like nothing there oops yeah look at this this is the entirety of the green in the sealed pool that is wild. All right, well, we're not playing green. I can tell you that right now. Check the uh, multicolored cards, though. Got Gleaming Gear Drake towards blue-red. Great value play with that Investigate when it hits the board, and it bec becomes a super big threat later in the game. If you've got a lot of synergy for it. Uh, Small Sentry for green-white. Repulsive Mutation for green-blue. Those are both quite decent. Um, I thought this was going to be super awkward because you do have to hold up a bunch of mana for it, but... It is actually nice that you get to counter a spell while still affecting the board, still buffing up your board a bit with those counters. So I have gotten blown out by that card a couple times, so I still haven't played it myself, but I think I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, we've got some really good green-white cards here, just Tristani and this Buried in the Garden for excellent removal. These green disguise cards aren't terrible, uh, but they're not great. The Sumala Sentry is pretty awesome, though. Uh, when you're flipping your face down cards, getting extra counters on this and the face down. So there are some really good green white cards, even if there isn't good green. So that might convince us to go that way, but honestly, unless our white is really, really deep, it'd be kind of hard to do because our green is so empty. We do have a couple blue-white cards, obviously the Ezrim being absolutely massive. So if we do head in that direction, uh, that would be pretty awesome. So if our blue is decent and our white is decent, that'd probably be the simplest place to be, seeing how empty the green is. And I think the only green deck I'd end up interested in here would be the green-white deck, just because of these multicolored cards. So green-white or blue-white, hopefully. So fingers really crossed here that our white is very deep, because we really want to play that color with our rares with our bombs in general and it's fine i mean there are enough cards but a lot of them are pretty weak i am not really a fan of forum familiars they're quite slow quite dirtily same with essence of antiquity defenestrated phantom sanctuary wall 
Yeah, we have none of the premium commons outside of makeshift binding for the removal spell at common. But we don't have any of the good common creatures like inside source. That's a 1 1 and a 2 2 for 3. We don't have the novice inspector. That's a 1 mana 1 2 that investigates. We don't have any of the dog walkers in our multicolored cards to flip up. But we do have the granite witness in blue white, which isn't that bad. Yeah, I think our best common is like museum night watch here because we're not making wide enough board states for on the drop to be great there's enough cards here that we can uh, we can definitely go white but it's not as good as i wanted it to be uh, based on our rares and our blues really not deep either this could be an issue this could be an issue considering our green-white rares and our blue-white rares are tremendously powerful, so if we don't have enough cards to go in those directions, we could have issues. Black is completely empty, too. How does this happen? I guess that's just this format. It's because we opened this much multicolored nonsense. Right, like, now that we're on play boosters, sealed pools all have, like, six less cards than they used to, Plus, this set has a bunch of multicolored cards, taking the spot of what would normally be some more monocolored cards for your deck. So when you open up a sealed pool with, god, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20? When you open up a sealed pool of 20 multicolored cards, just all your colors are just going to be empty individually. And it forces us into potential splashing around in a sealed pool that can't really support it we've got one nervous gardener uh one public thoroughfare one escape tunnel there's three cards in the entire sealed pool to help mana fix yeah i mean some of these multicolored cards are hybrid mana costs so while the green itself isn't deep and isn't good there are five disguise cards we could play face down then flip up later so that ups the amount of green cards there granite witness ups the amount of white cards yeah we're gonna have to do something this is not a sealed pool that builds itself black has literally nothing in it there's two unscrupulous agents and that's it basically these cards are all filler I mean, Gorehound can be good in the right build, but the Sealed Pool does not have the right build. We don't have that quantity of creatures you need for that ability, so Black's literally unplayable. Green is very light. Uh, blue is very light. Uh, what about Red? There's a slightly higher quantity of cards here, but there's a lot of cards I simply just don't like. And Sealed, like Connecting the Dots, Concealed Weapon, these braggarts aren't very good. What? Do you do with a sealed pool like this yeah i mean this is a awkward sealed pool none of our colors are deep enough to support building a deck around a bunch of synergistic commons and uncommons and really building around a certain strategy so i imagine in that case our best bet here is to just throw our rares into a deck and hope for the best the seal pool does not have a lot of play to it, honestly. There are not many options. Yeah. I mean, I guess our white is our deepest color. And it has the most of our bomb rares. So we just force green, white, or blue, white here. And hope we make that borderline of enough playables because we also just don't have good fixing here so let's keep every green hybrid card in the deck i think because that will give us a little bit more cards because if we go blue white we have just as much weak mono blue cards in our sealed pool as we do just like weak mono green cards but when you look at the multicolored cards, if we go green-white instead, we have Sentry and Tristani and these hybrid green mana cards. Um, whereas if we go blue-white, we just really have Ezrim. 
Ezrim is the only card that we gain out of going blue-white instead of green-white. Because Granite Witness, we can still do off of just white mana, off of that Disguise flip. The Crowd Control Wardens, we can still do off just white mana, so these aren't pushing towards green, but... There's literally only one card pushing towards blue out of the multicolored stuff. It's a really good card, but by being in green, instead of getting one Ezrum, we get one Trostani and one Buried in the Garden and one Sumala Sentry, which is actually pretty decent here considering that our colors are empty enough and weak enough that we have to run a ton of filler disguise cards. So by running all of this disguise nonsense, now we actually are... Getting a lot of triggers off of the Somala Sentry, maybe getting a lot of plus one plus one counters. So I think this is just where it's at here. And I think one one buried in the garden, one escape tunnel for good pieces of fixing. Uh one buried in the garden, one escape tunnel, and one um nervous gardener is not enough to try to splash in the double blue rare, which is the only thing in the sealed pool really powerful enough to want in the deck outside of these colors. I don't think there's anything to splash in unless we can make it to two blue sources, which is a difficult splash. We do have a meticulous archive, I suppose. So that gets there a little bit. It's like a little bit extra help. Eh... Yeah, I mean, I guess we can do Escape Tunnel and Public Thoroughfare and um, Buried in the Garden and Nervous Gardener. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six blue sources if I play one island in a Meticulous Archive. Six blue sources, we're trying to hit double blue. It's gonna take to like turn seven or eight on average, I imagine, but this card is so powerful, it's fine if we don't have double blue till turn seven or eight. I'll go for it. One in Rome, when you've got a weird empty field pool like this, some adjustments will be made. All right, so we got to cut 13 cards here. Luckily, the deck is absolutely chalked full of garbage fillers, so there's plenty of cards to cut, like the chalk outline in a deck that has no ways to remove cards from our graveyard. That is an insta-cut. All right, we are on 23 creatures and 12 non-creatures, so we'll just start things by cutting quite a few creatures out of here. We're not going to be a very aggressive deck. Our mana curve is just not going to be very good. None of these creatures are incredibly efficient for their mana values. Most of them are quite filler. So I imagine we want to drop down quite a bit. That'll also make our board wipe a little better. A little more likely to hit our opponent harder than us if we play a grindier, slower game with less cheap creatures that die to it. So I'm going to cut all these low mana value, super filler creatures. Sealed in general should play a decent bit slower than draft. We shouldn't have to worry as often about getting just completely run over by Boros aggro decks or like blue-white detectives, stuff like that, that can get a really wide board and just jam into us super quickly. So I think I am going to cut the most filler one, two mana cards. I still do like the Inspector kind of, but I think the Mavericks and the Sanctuary Wall are going to be an instant cut. We have a million three mana plays that are all our disguise cards. So we're going to cut a good chunk of these. Do this the simple way here and just put the definite keeps in their own pile. Like we're never cutting Tristani. Never cutting the Granite Witness. Museum Night Watch is quite decent. We definitely need the Gardener for fixing. I think that's it for stuff I definitely wouldn't cut. Or I'm familiar still. Really situational, not great for the cost. Scoundrel, quite expensive, really situational. Essence of Antiquity, quite situational. Crowd Control Warden is kind of just a big doofus, but at least it's always a big doofus, and it is castable on the front half as well in this deck. Same with the Phantom. These are not castable on the front half, so those are potential cuts as well. 
I think we do that. I guess Crocodelf is probably a definite keep because we are splashing enough blue to try to hit double blue in here. We're going to have six blue sources, so Crocodelf should be uh, not that difficult of a mana cost. Um, what else are we cutting here? I actually like Hazda Vigilantes in a deck that has a bunch of disguise like this deck. Like, it's good in really aggressive decks that have a bunch of small creatures, but it's also fine in a deck that has a bunch of disguise because you can just load up counters onto your disguised cards before you flip them up into the uh, very big bottom halves that they have. So we will, I think, keep the Vigilantes and the Ezrum here for sure, but maybe drop the Lamasu. Yeah, that's just a 5-mana 4-3 flyer. Yeah, so those are potential cuts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 creatures. Cut that, we'd still have 14. I think I'm fine running a 14 creature deck. And we will do so here. So we just need to cut three non-creature spells, which are going to be the combat trick kind of stuff. The stuff that wants a really wide board state. So we cut the on the job. Cut the due diligence. Cards that are just for getting damage in, really. And cards that incentivize us having a wide board state. Fine with Buried in the Garden and Makeshift Binding. I think those are incredible. No Witnesses is also quite good. Make Your Move is fine in Sealed. It should be slower to where there will be more Power 4 Greater Creatures. Plus, it is main deckable Artifact Enchantment Removal. One thing I am noticing here is this is main decking a Pick Your Poison at the current build, which I think we definitely don't want to do when we have Buried in the Garden and Makeshift Binding and Make Your Move. Um... And it's also main decking four combat tricks still between two fanatical strengths and two get a leg up. I do like the raw efficiency of get a leg up um, being just a one mana trick. So if I was going to cut one, it'd be the fanatical strengths first. So let's certainly drop the pick your poison and the double strength. And I suppose it's a slow enough deck. We get to go 18 lands here, but we can run double blue. That gives us seven blue sources now. Um, what is the green and the white looking like right now? 16 white, 10 green, but green gives us fixing with Nervous Gardener. So green's slightly more important than it looks right now. We have seven white sources and six green. And there's only one double white card. The Defenestrated Phantom can be flipped up for a single white. I'm going to add another green source in here. We'll go 7-7 seven, seven there. So we will put an 18th land in here, because again, these are all really high mana value things. All these three drops. Um, and then we'll also probably just throw another creature back in. I would rather run a 15th creature than a third combat trick. I don't even know how much I like wrench here, but probably better than a 16th really filler creature, which is the only thing we'd be putting back in. This is every creature left in the sealed pool and they're all filler. Yeah, let's go. Um... I guess there's a Yaris, but trying to splash in a double blue card and a one red card at the same time could be quite difficult, but almost every creature in the sealed pool is a disguised creature, so might be powerful enough to justify the really difficult splash. So it works with like all of our creatures. I mean, I guess at that at that point, we could choose to just splash red instead of blue. We don't get to play the Meticulous Archive anymore, but we swap Archive out for a Plains, swap the two islands for a Forest and a Mountain, and then it's pretty easy to splash in a single red card instead of a double blue card. That might actually be where it's at. And then we run like a... Rift Burst Hellion is the last edition because it synergizes quite well with Yaris, where if it dies, it comes back flipped up. Yeah, again, I think Azrum is quite a bit stronger than Yaris in a vacuum, but our sealed pool is already basically forcing us to play a million disguise creatures, so Yaris is actually going to be pretty decent, potentially drawing us extra cards, potentially giving us free flips. And Yaris is going to be much easier to splash than Ezrim. We don't have to hit two off-color sources to cast this. We just need one red source. Pretty easy to get the first off-color mana, so... Swap things around to Naya, and then the last addition will be Rift Burst Hellion. 
for a big disguise card to flip up. And yeah, swap the two islands in the Meticulous Archive, play a Plains. Another forest and one mountain. I imagine. I should not have clicked the suggest lands button, but it gave me a mountain, so there's that. 14, 15, 16, 17. 15 white cards, 12 green. Still just one double white card of the board wipe. But this is seven, eight, nine ways to get a green source already. So I will actually lean towards the quantity there and go for another planes. Could go for a second mountain, I guess. Probably not necessary. One, two, three, four, five red sources with the single mountain for one red card in the whole deck. Now we'll go 8-7 on it. Alright. Well. Weird sealed pool. I imagine this is about the best kind of thing we could salvage here. Yeah, I mean, maybe blue-white would be fine, but it would still be running like a bunch of filler. Disguise flip cards, and by going green-white instead, we get a really easy red splash to Yaris. The alternative is green-white splash the blue, but we saw that splash is pretty difficult, hitting double blue mana. Yeah, I... I don't know. I don't know. Awkward sealed pool. Don't imagine this gets anywhere near the four-win run, but I'll do my best with this one, and we'll call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today. We're in a green-white deck splashing a bit of red, because... And just what we had available in the Steeled Pool. In green-white, we get to play our best rares with Trostani, three Whispers alongside some white rares like a Board Wipe with no Witnesses, and an Unyielding Gatekeeper for a removal spell on a stick. We've also got some decent green-white uncommons in this direction with Sumala Sentry synergizing well with the massive stack of Disguise cards that we've opened up in our Sealed Pool as well as the Buried in the Garden just being spectacular removal that also helps fix for our splash of Yaris, Roar of the Old Gods, which is a relatively easy splash, considering we do have one Escape Tunnel, one Public Thoroughfare, one Buried in the Garden, and one Nervous Gardener. And then, of course, the Yaris is another card that synergizes with our absolute stack of Disguise cards. So... Not the greatest sealed pool for sure, a lot of these cards in here are very filler, but our colors are all empty enough um, that no matter what we play, we have to play a lot of filler in this sealed pool, because no color is very deep, as you can see, they're all just a very low quantity of cards, because we hit the mother load of multicolored stuff and we can't just play them all in one deck. Because most of these are pretty specific, pretty narrow cards. Uh, not just with their mana costs, but also with their synergies and everything. So, awkward deck today, awkward sealed pool. But we do have some power in here with the rares. So if we draw the right stuff at the right time, it could absolutely pop off. And that's what we're hoping for. Definitely a sealed pool that's got us with our fingers crossed throughout the gameplay. So, without further ado... Let's head into the gameplay and see how it does. All right, here we are, game one on the play. Very slow hand. This would be a death sentence in draft. But I think it's perfectly keepable in sealed. And the makeshift binding goes a long way against anything more aggressive from our opponents. Uh, 2 1 can't be blocked by big creatures. It's slightly annoying. If I draw into any of my disguise cards, I can just trade off with Yaris here. I think I just wait and keep the makeshift binding for something better. But trading like a face down 2 2 for a specialist is uh, going to be really good if Yaris manages to stick on the board. Alright, well, our opponent has a much better sealed pool than us, <laughs> much more reminiscent of a draft deck than ours. 
Like, we've got some power rares, but we do not have the common and uncommon support that you really need in this format. The ability to curve out is vital in most modern limited formats, and this is no exception to that, so... A sealed pool that gets to go 2-drop into inside source is pretty great, especially when that 2-drops exit specialist. That card is very nice. Oh boy, now they get to spend all 4 mana turn 4. We might just be out of here. So we are also flooding now, which is not good. Uh, I imagine I need to bind the face down over anybody else here, because that could be bigger than 2 power, but everything else on their board is 2 power or less. And I have to just hold off on blocks. Another creature there. Oh, what are we exile, by the way? A Crocodile. All right. Yeah, that was a good exile for us. They would have had the mana to flip that up as a 5-5. Five, five. Be bigger than our whole board. I am one mana off from just hard casting the Hellion, but luckily Yaris works very well with us just playing it face down. I can make your move their flyer. Um, so they're already not going to attack into the Yaris, so I imagine I'm supposed to attack in here so I can draw the card if they don't block. I don't think this face down is actually helping us block at all, because they're already not attacking us on the ground. I guess it blocks the exit specialist, there is that. Yeah, I didn't consider that. But we did get the card draw, so I think this was pretty, pretty decent, pretty worth it. But for two... yeah, sure. Vigilance for the future is going to be very nice. Their face down's dog walker. They have dog walker too. That kind of feels like, or this game kind of feels like a below average sealed deck versus an above average draft deck. And that is not where you want to be. We have a board wipe in our sealed pool. So in classic sealed fashion, we can hope to top deck a bomb and win. But that's our only hope. And we need it. Instantly, we need it right now. They have two inside sources and Dog Walker and the Market Watch fan. This is literally just a good draft deck. Yeah, I mean, I have three blockers block, 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 take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I am exactly dead. I guess not quite because we can make your move. A flyer. We can go to one life. Okay, well, don't hold up. Double strike is 10 damage. It's not enough. If I manage to survive this swing and then they don't block for some reason, I might be able to just kill them with Tristani's double strike abilities. So we definitely want this to die. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exact lethal. We cast make your move if they have literally any trick. We're dead. Oh, this doesn't kill flyers? Oh, well, then we are just dead. Which one kills flyers? Oh, the green one. Okay, I see. All right, well, I guess I actually don't survive no matter what I do then. Can this give lifelink? No. Yeah, okay, well, then we couldn't. We couldn't live here. I mean, I'm double checking, just really making sure, because it's one and done. You lose one game and you're out. Or you lose one round and you're out. Yeah, no, we're just dead. Alright, well. 
I don't like our odds here. I don't like our odds here, but I'll do what I can. What can we do? Well, we need more early blockers, so we have to run like form familiars here. The problem is even with our early blockers, we're just going to fall behind because like any good draft deck in this format, all of their creatures come with two cards. Dog walkers, three creatures off one card. Inside source is two off of one card. They have two inside source and one dog walker minimum. We have zero cards in the entire sealed pool that make two creatures off one body. So there's not a ton we can do about that. Like, yeah, I mean, I can run like some form familiars over some bigger stuff, but these are still just going to be played as three mana two twos face down anyway, which is basically the same thing our big stuff's going to be played as. Oh boy. I mean, I could play a Sanctuary Wall and soak up one or two damage a turn. That doesn't actually trade or kill any of their creatures, though. I mean, sure, I guess. I'll get rid of five drops that can only be played turn five for more early blockers, like a Sanctuary Wall. And one Forum Familiar. Don't see any other counterplay the sealed pool really has. Do we have like literally no removal in the sealed pool too? Basically, there's one suspicious detonation. What is this sealed pool? There's one suspicious detonation and one buried in the garden and one make your move. Yeah, the only removal in the entire pool that we're not playing is a suspicious detonation. This is wild. The more I look at it, like, it has good rares, but the more I look at it, the less playable it becomes. Eh, there's Assassin's Trophy. That's one more removal spell. Very narrow removal, though. Have to be Golgari to play it. It's narrow to end up in your deck, not that it's narrow during gameplay. It does destroy any permanent. All right. Here we are on the play this time, which is certainly helpful. Let's get the red source. God, no shot. Are they going to 1, 2, 3 curve us here? No. They are not playing a 2 drop. Thank the lord. They are going to play an inside source on turn three. Nasty. I think a 3-3 three, three body's pretty awesome here. Oh, it's only two to equip. Whoops. I think a 3-3 three, three body, body is good enough here to go for the uh, Vigilant Swing. Get that set up. And just start hard casting these, maybe. Well, I can't hard cast a crocodile. Well, here's the combat trick. That ain't good. Oh my god, they have. Envy is a sin. Envy is one of the seven deadly sins. Envy is not good. Calm down, goblet. Double inside source, dog walker, and on the job. Make sure I'm using the right ability here. That was almost bad.
They blow up this crowd control ward and I have no counterplay. I need to be able to get a leg up and have my warden kill their Lamasu. Uh, but they can just respond with removal and then I lose the game. They can do that if I do it on my ward card as well. And if they don't have the removal, it's significantly better to use this on the warden. If they have removal, it's probably three mana or less. Or four mana or less, so they can pay for the ward anyway, so... Just hope. Yeah, I mean, they just pay for the ward. This becomes a 4-4 if we targeted it, and then they kill it with make your move and still get in. Now I have to start tapping... That is aggressive. What do they have? Oh my god. <laughs> they have two on the jobs too? Okay, cool. So my options were to die. Or to go to three, lose my century. Don't even trade. So then I'm at three life, I get to poke them again that time. I could flip and still hold up the uh, the tap, but then I die to a single removal spell. Even on board, I have to tap Lamasu to not die, so I go to one on board. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do, honestly? <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, well, here's another look at the deck, I do think this is about the strongest deck we could really salvage from this sealed pool. Something like this. I mean, this deck doesn't look good, I'll be honest, but it doesn't look abysmal. It just doesn't have a lot of great counterplay to the go wide kind of aggro that white has in this format. But to be fair, our sealed pool as a whole can't really do anything about that. We don't have our own ways to make multiple creatures off of one card. There's not a single card in our sealed pool that's uh, along the quality of an inside source or a dog walker when it comes to committing to the board early and getting multiple bodies. So our best bets are really all in the deck already. Our best bet is to just draw into like a no witnesses board wipe and try to go from there, or maybe draw into an early makeshift binding and multiple of the two drops and three mana disguise cards to try to clutter up the board quickly enough. I mean, that game two was slightly close, like it was closer than it looked because of the amount of damage we were potentially swinging back with with the wrench. Um, but it's just going to be two quick losses right off the bat. Yeah, again, deck doesn't look great, but... It's about the best we could get out of the sealed pool. We'll take one last look at the sealed pool as well, so you can all see if there was anything else you would have done here, but... I mean, so many of our colors are so empty. There are seven blue cards total, multiple of which are mediocre filler that we never really want to make to the cut, like Behind the Mask and Jaded Analyst. There are six black cards total, multiple, again, mediocre filler you never want to play, like Case of the Gorgon's Kiss, Gorehound with no synergy, Toxin Analysis. Red had enough cards to maybe try to play red here, but again, they're all quite borderline. I guess Mask Maker would be pretty decent because our sealed pool is... Just so many multicolored disguise cards that no matter what color pairs or trios we try to play, we're going to end up with a clump of disguise cards to play face down. So Mask Maker would be decent, but nothing we can build is aggressive enough to use Scapegoat well. Um, knife and Concealed Weapon are pretty mediocre equipments. Uh, connecting the dots is really not going to be playable. Again, we're not that aggressive. 
even if we are, I'm not a big fan of the card. Orangutan's super filler, Tracker's super filler, Braggarts are super filler, Detonation is quite expensive removal, but our sealed pool is low on removal, so that'd be fine. Yeah, I mean, red has a tiny bit of stuff, and then... I really don't know. Really don't know where it's at here. Don't think there was anything super powerful, but if there's something you thought I missed, if there's something that you think would have been incredible here, I highly doubt it, but you could leave it in the comments section below. Um, I don't know, though. I, I think it's green-white. Get your Tristani in there. Get your board wipe in there. Get the best removal in the sealed pool, getting to play makeshift binding and buried in the garden. This seems like it had the most action out of anything we had available, and I don't think there was a much better way to to build it, considering everything that we have on the sidelines out of white and green is tremendously filler. Like, the best white card on the sidelines is probably the Lamasu, but that wouldn't have helped us in any of those games, really. A 5-drop against a, a deck that aggressive. Um, and there's nothing good in green on the sidelines. It's just fanatical strengths, and we're not aggressive enough to want four combat tricks. We already have the two get a leg ups, which I think are better again for the efficiency for that cheap stat line. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could go full gamble and completely rely on rares and play the Ezrim over the Yaris and play uh, two islands in here. Just super finger cross. But I don't think there was anything we could build that would stand much of a chance against the kind of deck we ended up against round one. Just a really solid blue-white aggro deck with several ways to go wide, very similar to what you would see all over the place in draft in this format. Like I said during the gameplay, really just feels like it came down to us bringing a deck that resembles a below-average sealed deck to fight against a deck that resembles an above-average draft deck. Just not a great matchup for our sealed pool as a whole. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you're interested in seeing some more like this, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.